So I'm doing a little video here on how to build up your Jeep JK <coughs> axles. Um, Dana 30 front, 44 rear, or 44 front, 44 rear. Um, these right here are my brand new set of 44s. They came off of a Rubicon. They are already somewhat built. Um, but I'm going to beef them up. So first off, these, this gear, this axle has 513 gears and um, they're heat treated which makes them stronger so it's less likely to break so that's great and then because it came off a of Rubicon it has the Rubicon electric locker um, re matching rear so I'll have to explain it twice um, this has the JKS front axle um, track bar brace which is basically this giant combustion here um, what it does is it attaches to the stock track bar bracket that's in there and because that's super weak and it's only attached from like one area um, it basically attaches to it you weld to it and then you put this uh, spacer in there and then put the bolt through the stock position so that kind of helps also secure it and then this welds to your control arm which you know also helps reinforce that um, and then it also has this small truss piece right there that goes down and then attaches to the coil perch um, and basically the point of it is to help reinforce the stock re uh, front track bar bracket which is super weak and known to break. Now this piece right here um, is for a hydro assist. <coughs> basically it's just a uh, bolt that he welded onto it, the previous owner. Um, but yeah. Uh, so then the next thing, after looking at upgrading your uh, track bar bracket, something else to look at is gussets. Now this one already has the gussets on it, um, upper and lower. Gussets are this piece right here. If um, I don't have an axle without gussets currently, because my other, my Jeep actually has them already, that's axles. Um, it's just a small thin piece that goes like that and it's under here and this is um, maybe quarter inch or three six probably quarter that goes basically goes around it if it's perfectly to it and you just weld top and bottom weld it all and it helps reinforce that piece and so they're known to bend even though I have not seen anyone that has bent it web wheeling anyways and then it's the same thing with the lowers and if you can see that um, it's the same concept. The lowers are a lot beefier than the uppers, but still, if you're doing top, might as well do bottoms, right? <coughs> so once you have the gussets and a track bar, a uh, heavy duty track bar bracket, with the track bar bracket as well, you can get one that bolts on to the actual actual housing or that welds on. Um, preferably, I mean personally, weld on. I like better. I don't like using bolts on things that I don't need bolts for. Um, but yeah, there's tons of companies that make them. Um, so as long as if you get like a raised track bar bracket, especially if you get a raised track bar bracket, you want to make sure it doesn't just use that stock mount. It somehow reinforces it. Because when you raise it, it puts even more stress on this stock bracket. And that's no bueno. Sorry if I sound like I'm dying. I'm a little bit sick right now. <coughs> Again. Anyways, um, next thing to look at, since most people that own a Jeep and are uh, watching my videos own lifted Jeeps and stuff like that. So with lifted Jeeps come bigger tires, and bigger tires comes death wobble or wheel wobble. Um, oftentimes wheel wobble, rather not death wobble, death wobble usually comes from the track bar, but wheel wobble can often come from either a misbalanced tire some joints going bad somewhere. More than like, less likely, it's either your unit bearing, which is the part that these five studs, that's like what they actually come from is the unit bearing. It's the part that spins, that your wheel attaches to, that actually attaches to the axle. <coughs> um, but if it's not that, if it's not that, your first thing to check, and what you should do anyways if you have uh, bigger tires, is ball joints. Now these ones right here are Synergy ball joints, um, or poly performance if you will. 
upper and lower. See in there? Yeah. Um, they have little grease zerks, and if you get RCV shaft, there's a special zerk fitting that'll fit, you know, the special zerk in the bottom one, so you don't have to like break it off when you go. Um, Terraflex now makes a set, Poly Performance. Dynatrack makes their bomb proof ones um, for a price. I'm fairly certain those are the three. Do not get adjustable ball joints. Um, they, it's just not smart. You don't need them. People say you need them, they don't know anything. <laughs> They're just not great to run. They're very prone to failure. So ball joints, gussets, track bar bracket. Next up is something that is commonly known. Um, bear with me here since it's on the bottom. Is control arm mount skids. The previous owner welded on a set, and you can see he already has some scratches into it. Um, if you hit those and they bend and you lose your control arm mount, I mean, <coughs> you could probably limp your way home very slowly, but that's no bueno. You could either buy heavy duty ones, which I think Curry and Terraflex both make, um, but or you can buy a bracket, or not a bracket, um, a skid for it, just 45 bucks, something like that, through Artec, and problem solved. All right, next to look at is the tie rod. This one has the Terraflex, not the Terraflex, sorry, the Rock Crawler aluminum tie rod. It's a one and five eighths, I think, inch aluminum. Um, the ends, if you look at your drag link, the top end of the drag link are these ends right here. Um, it's much bigger than the stock ones. People are like, oh yeah, but you have to use a stock one, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not the stock. It's a beefier than the stock. But it's still, you can buy it from the dealer, which is nice. You can ruin it. You don't have to wait 10 days to get it or something like that. Um, so that's theirs. Terraflex makes them. Synergy makes them. Everyone makes a tie rod comes down to preference. Everyone runs them. Everyone says they work. Everyone says they don't work. Blah, 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 blah. Um, this one are, also has, since when you raise your track bar mount, you should also do a flip steering. But if you do flip steering, you need three inch bump stops. But anyways, uh, flip steering, your, normally your drag link comes here and goes to the bottom. <coughs> um, instead, now it'll go to the top. And basically what that does is the more parallel to the ground your track bar are and your drag link are, the nicer your Jeep's going to drive. That's optimally is what you want. It's like the low center of gravity, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so right now what I'm doing, and the rear is basically, again, the JKS raised track bar bracket, uh, which goes onto the stock one and then reinforces it as well in multiple areas. Riddler diff covers, and then he had these JKS bolt-on adjustable uh, coil mounts. Uh, but it looks like he cut off the bolt-on parts, which I don't really care because I don't want them anyways. I mean, I could weld them on like that, and then so I can get the exact um, angle I need. But I'm an Artec fan, so I just bought theirs. Um, so first off, oh, it's got rear spare rear shafts, which is great. Um, but what I'm doing is I ordered Artec everything because that's what I do. Um, I got the front truss. This already has gussets and control arm skids, so I have no point in getting those. Um, I got the truss, the, the heavy duty raised front track bar bracket. And um, I got a new mount to hatch my Hydro Assist to. I got to get some new tabs to weld onto my new track bar bracket for the Hydro Assist mount over here. <coughs> so I'm basically cutting all this off and. Um, I'll show you how it turns out after that.